This is the second, the first part of exam two review for Kim 111. Okay, so we're going to start with the subscripts and what chemical compounds and what they mean. So here, for instance, make sure you know that here, this two means that there's two hydrogens. When there's no number written there, that's automatically a one. It's just not written. So that means there's one sulfur. And the four means that there's four oxygens. Notice that there's no numbers there at all. So that means we have one calcium and one sulfur. There's no number here, so that means one calcium. The two outside the parentheses means that everything inside the parentheses is multiplied by two. So we have an invisible one here. One times two is two nitrogens. And then we have 3 times 2, which is equal to 6 oxygens. All right. You need to memorize the polyatomic ions. Nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, chlorine and chloride, carbonate, ammonium, phosphate and phosphite, acetate, hydroxide, dichromate, and chromate. Some patterns I want you to see here. Notice going from eight to eight, if you look at the chemical formulas, everything is the same except for the number of oxygens. So as we move, as we remove an oxygen, it goes from eight to eight. If you look over here, the same is true. Everything is the same except for the number of oxygens. It goes from eight to eight when you remove an oxygen. Something else to memorize are the diatomic molecules. There's seven of them. If you look at the periodic table, you have hydrogen over here. And then we have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Notice it kind of makes the number seven if you were to outline it. That's one way to remember what the, chemo what the elements are. You should be able to know what the charges of an atom is just by looking at the periodic table for the representative elements. For instance, everything in the first row is a plus one. Everything in the second row is a plus two. We skip the middle and we go to plus three. We skip the next one and then we start going reverse. Minus three, minus two, minus one. The ones that we skip are called transition metals. And those we need, we need Roman numerals to identify what they are. Their charges can change, and that's true with this row as well. So like tin and lead, sometimes they're a plus two, sometimes they're a plus four. You really need to either look at the chemical formula or be told what those charges are. So once we're able to figure out what the charges are by looking at the periodic table, we can figure out the chemical formula. So for instance, we have lithium, which is in the plus one row, and we have nitrogen, which is in the minus three row. So Li is a plus one, nitrogen is a minus three, crisscross that. The numbers come down, the charges do not. So Li you leave the minus alone and you just take the three and then in one. You leave the positive alone and you just take the one. So it'd be Li3 and you don't write the one. Li3N. The next one, aluminum is here. It's in the plus three row. Chlorine is here. It's in the minus one row. So Al3 plus Cl minus 1, 1 minus. Crisscross it down, you leave the charges behind. So that becomes Al, it's 1, so I don't write anything. Cl, 3, and you leave the plus behind. Al, Cl, 3.
aluminum chloride. Sodium is a plus one. Phosphorus is a minus three. So Na plus P three minus crisscross it. Na, you leave the minus alone and you just take the three and then P. On the last one, I want to make sure that you know that you need to reduce. So we have beryllium here, which is a minus two. And we have oxygen here, I'm sorry, a plus two. And an oxygen here, which is a minus two. So B, E, O. Beryllium is a plus two. Oxygen is a minus two. We crisscross it, and it becomes B, E, two, O, two. Because two and two are both divisible by two, I can divide it by two, and it just becomes B, E, O, because two divided by two equals one. Now that we know how to make the formula from the, comp from the elements, let's take, th let's take the formula and say the actual name couple things to remember. You need to know what you're looking at before you know which set of rules to follow. So the first question you should ask yourself is whether something's a non-metal or a metal. The second question you should ask yourself, if it is a metal, is it a transition metal? So let's start here. We have sodium and nitrate. Sodium and nitrate is a polyatomic ion that we're supposed to remember. Now a little clue for you, a little hint. You notice how there's three capital letters here? That means we have a polyatomic ion in there somewhere. Here, the next one, we only have two capital letters. That means we do not have a polyatomic ion. So that's one way of telling that apart. So sodium is a plus one. And notice it's in the represent elements. I can tell you what the charge is just by looking at the periodic table. That means we do not need parentheses. We do not need Roman numerals. So we just write sodium. We don't need Roman numerals, so we just go straight to the anion, which is nitrate. And once again, that was one we were supposed to memorize. You have more than two capital letters, which means we have a polyatomic ion in there somewhere. Copper is right here. You notice that I can't figure out what the charge is by looking at the periodic table because it's in this middle row. That means I'm going to need Roman numerals. So I'm going to put parentheses there to put the Roman numerals in. Bromine. You take the first syllable, so that's brom, and you end it with ide. So it becomes bromide. Now, to figure out the charge, now it's here and here. We're going to uncross it just like we crisscrossed it before. So that becomes 3 plus and 1 minus. The metal is always positive. So once you do that, you double check that that's correct for the anion. Bromine is here. It's in the minus 1 row. So that checks out. So that means copper is indeed positive 3. Let's try that again. Iron is here. It's a transition metal, which means I need Roman numerals. So iron, Roman numeral, parentheses. I have more than two capital letters. I have three capital letters, which means I have a polyatomic ion there. SO4 is our polyatomic ion. Notice I always put parentheses around it as soon as I realize I have a polyatomic ion. That's because I want to make sure I know that that stays as a set. So that means when I crisscross it or uncross it, I'm crossing the one on the outside that's not written. Be careful of it. I've seen a lot of people who would cross the four, but that four is part of sulfate. It won't change. So it's plus one, minus one. Should sulfate be a minus one? The answer is no. It's supposed to be a minus two. So I'm going to multiply that by two to make it a minus two. You have to multiply that one by two as well, so that becomes iron two sulfate. Try some more. Nitrogen and oxygen. We only have two capital letters, which means that we do not have a polyatomic ion here. We also notice that they're both nonmetals. 
Non-metals means that we need the prefixes. So there's only one nitrogen, so I just say nitrogen. You only use mono for the second element. Then oxygen is here. We have two of them, so that becomes dioxide. Mg, Mg3P2. We have a metal and nonmetal, which means we have an ionic. I can look at the periodic table and tell you it's a plus two, so I do not need parentheses. So I'm just going to write magnesium. I only have two capital letters there, which means that I do not have a polyatomic ion. I need to figure out what phosphorus is. So phosphorus becomes phosphide. Manganese is here. I cannot look at the periodic table and tell you what the charge is. So that means I am going to have to figure out what the charge is supposed to be. That becomes manganese. Because I don't know what the charge is, I'm going to put parentheses. And then from there, the oxygen is here. It becomes oxygen, becomes oxide. Uncross the numbers, so that's plus 2 and minus 1. Oxygen is supposed to be a minus 2, not a minus 1. So I have to multiply them both by 2. So 2 times 2, 1 times 2. Manganese is actually 4. So it's manganese 4 oxide. I believe this is the last screen for these. P2O5, they're both nonmetals, which means I use the prefixes. So 2 is di, so diphosphorus. Five is penta, so pent oxide. Magnesium is here. That means I do not need Roman numerals because I can tell you it's a plus two. I have more than two capital letters, which means I have a polyatomic ion here. SO4 is my polyatomic ion, it's sulfate. So magnesium, sulfate. And then finally we have calcium, which once again is a plus two. I can look at the periodic table and figure out what it is. So I can write calcium. And then Cl is here, and I can write chloride. I only have two capital letters, which means that I do not have a polyatomic ion there. Okay, so let's move on to acids. When we're referring to acids, we're referring to protic acids. That simply means that we have a hydrogen there at the beginning, or an H plus there at the beginning. The quantity of hydrogens we have all depends on how many, what's the charge of the anion. So if it's a minus two, that means we have two hydrogens. If it's a minus one, it means we only have one hydrogen. Polyatomic acids, if it ends in eight, so like sulfate, it becomes sulfuric. Ick, I ate an acid. Um, if it's nitrate, it becomes nitric. So the eight turns into ick. If it ends in it, it starts with, it ends with O-U-S, us. So, for instance, if it's nitrite, it becomes nitrous acid. Binary, meaning that it only has two atoms there, so hydrogen plus something else off the periodic table. You take the first syllable of the element, so fluorine would be fluor, so hydrofluoric. Hydrobromic, hydrochloric. Once again, memorize these because this will help you with that part too. Eight becomes ite when you lose an oxygen. Phosphate becomes phosphite when you lose an oxygen. The eight becomes ick, the ite becomes O-U-S. So 
So if you memorize these five, you'll be pretty set. Because once you subtract an oxygen, it becomes us. So if it's NO2, it be chlorous acid. If it's, in, if it's SO3, it'd be sulfur, sulfurous acid. If you take away two oxygens, it becomes hypo. So NO would be hy, hyponitric acid. If you add an oxygen, so it would be NO4 rather than NO3, it would be per nitric acid. Right, and that is the first part of the review for exam one, exam two.